real life. Okay. Yes, uh, I don't know if you are live in your yeah, end. Yeah, we are live. We are live, yes, are live yes. right here in our end. I'm in live my here end. too. Yeah. I'm live here, yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so uh, let's give a few seconds and... Uh, Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to my channel we we'll discuss the issues of the lockdown and the lockup and the COVID-19 experience. Uh, Abuja has been on lockdown for the past five weeks. And of course, you know the reason why the coronavirus cases just kept, kept increasing over time during the period of the lockdown. At this period, the government advised a lot of caution from us all, social distancing, compulsory use of the face mask, washing of hands with sanitizer, and a whole range of health tips to keep us safe. Today, the lockdown was suspended, and we we're told to move about with adherence to these health tips. But the question we need to ask is this, on day one of the COVID-19 lockdown easing, is it really working? What best approach should we follow? And what can Nigerians do to help flatten the curve of the spread? Because as it stands right now, we don't know if the curve is still there or if it has been flattened. And then what can we learn from Russia and Ghana? Who is the lock and had consequences thereafter and of course we need to know what the economic benefits really are uh to discuss this issue with us this evening we have two seasoned journalists one from lagos and one from abuja we have uh mr paul dada a seasoned journalist and current affairs analyst from lagos and we have Mr. Ebrico John Friday, also a seasoned journalist and a current affairs analyst from Abuja. So we want to fire the first salvo. Welcome, please, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Let me start with let me start with John. John, how is Abuja, Asian city? Well, this evening Abuja is cool, no problem. Okay. Uh, we're talking about the lock, the easing of the lockdown they want today. Yes. I must tell you, the city was jam packed. Hmm. Yeah, because I actually when I saw a, a video that people were just thinking, uh, where people are rushing. Hmm. That is what actually happened. Banks were besieged. Hmm. You know, uh, marketplaces, the roads and mm. all that. Mm. And I think I shared some of those videos. I shared some of those videos yes, nice. today of uh, how Abuja really looked like. And seriously, all the other protocols, precautionary mm. measures in place were all abused. Wow. They are abused. It's not everybody you, you see in the street, the street with the face mask. It's not everybody you will see, see on the street, you know, mm. You still see people go about their business with the crowding and all that. The bank, for example, were crowded. Hmm. Nobody is announcing to them, you know, the need to distance from each other. Vehicles were crowded. All those protocols, all those measures that the uh, task force here in Abuja and the, the presidential task force all put in place were all flouted. All of them. So we hope that you know tomorrow and thereafter, 
these things need to be corrected because mm -hmm. of the fear of already what is happening in other countries where lockdown is. Seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I, I was monitoring events from where I was throughout the day. I was making calls. I was uh, uh, looking out here and there to see what is actually happening and everywhere. People are just eager to meet up with one appointment. People were eager to get money out of the bank. People were eager to do their business, just like normal, just like every other day before the lockdown. Yeah, so all those measures were flouted and really, really, okay. uh, the tax force, both FCT tax force and the presidential tax force, they just need to step up their game in, in following through with people. And they need to distance themselves the transportation uh, 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 measures of at least two or three people in the in the car and all that need to really be done. And also, I'm not sure if there is any 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 location of uh, of places. And I, I'm not sure. Perhaps like malls. Uh, although, though today malls uh, the, the malls are not crowded, but there are some other places, especially the banks, and then the streets, mm -hmm. the roads. We are all crowded, so I think okay. something to be done. Well, uh, that's that's not a very cheery news from Abuja. How about Lagos? Paul you went out today. Uh, you just um, the same experience, the similar experience uh, uh, we have, uh, we had in Lagos. Actually, uh, last night I told my reporters that they should monitor the level of compliance with the measures put in place by government, even as the uh, lockdown was being teased in places. And then, um, well, we, we, we monitored the banks, uh, we monitored the commercial transport system. Well, uh, for the Keke Rider, the Keke Rider, uh, we were happy to find out that uh, the Keke Rider cooperated. You, you know, the um, Keke, they take uh, three passengers, three or four passengers, and Labour State government has said that, well, they must be taken than two. Uh, the ones we observed, uh, uh, they actually uh, kept to, 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 to that, that different, uh, different uh, parts of Lagos, uh, they kept to that. Only that um, uh, they hiked the, the fear. So they were not losing, actually. If, the, if anybody was losing, was spending more, it was the commuters that were actually spending more. In some cases, I think the the, the fears were rose by hundred percent. Uh, in some places, in some places, maybe seventy five percent. Well, uh, as for the the bus drivers, I think I was even I think I told one of my reporters to even call the chairman of the ARCW leaders because I know that there was an interactive meeting between the uh, between the local state government and ARCW officials and some other union leaders. Because I, I knew, uh, and I still know, that there is no way uh, effect can be given to these, um, uh, these measures or these guidelines or rules without the cooperation of the union leaders. So the, the, both, the, 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 the downfalls were not actually cooperating. They were observing the, uh, the, the measures put in place. In fact, I think one of my reporters was a uh, she told us that uh, some uh, passengers were like, no, look, you've got to have only two people on each row. And then there was, you know, that heated, um, exchange of heated words, and uh, they would not listen. And then the bank, I was most disappointed uh, with the bank. Uh, because uh, somebody was making an excuse for them that, uh, I think it was more or less, that was, because it was the first day. I said, look, they had enough time to prepare. Um, they were asked to decontaminate uh, their, 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 their premises or their business today. If that was what they did today, and then they open tomorrow, it's, it's fine. But you see, they were not observing social distancing um, uh, measures. I went to several banks myself today. I was going from bank to bank, and uh, what I saw was very, very bad. Uh, in one of the banks, I went to pictures and... Uh, uh, one policeman was trying to challenge me, and I was trying to harass him, so I harassed him back, you know. 
any cause to be worried with the situation that we saw today is there any do we have any cause to really be worried that we are not actually fighting i mean we are not actually winning the battle we have cause to be worried very very strongly uh, mm. just like uh, paul observed a lot of people seem to trivialize this thing. That maybe for them, especially, you know, earlier, they, they, they look at it as if it's a big man, you know, issue. But now it, has, it is spreading to the communities. This is where the fear is now. And so, and in the communities, it's where there's real nonchalance. It's where you mm -hmm. have, I don't care people, they just want to go out there. The Okada people want to go out there market more to go out there. They don't care. So they seriously mm. need uh, for us to be worried. And mm. I think a lot of solutions have been proffered. Um, we all just have to be careful. The face mask is compulsory in Abuja here. It's compulsory. And where I stay, before you, you cross a particular point, you must have your face mask. Except you have to go back, you know, and still stay within here. But if you must cross that point, you must have your face mask. So there are some boys who are doing sharp business there to, to sell to those who don't have, so you can cross. Uh, so there in town, I saw a lot of people who don't have the face mask. So you, 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 you should be worried. I saw faces in, in the banks who don't have face masks. Since they are not distancing, there should be face masks so that when they are communicating, the speed, the droplets, you know, can be contained within the face mask. But all that is not there. So we must be worried. And since a lot of people are the rural area and are asymptomatic, they are not showing signs. So that is even where the fear is. Yes, a lot hmm. of them at the community level, they don't show sign on time. So that is where the fear is. So I think there is, there is a need for government to really, really step up. Step up in ensuring that citizens adhere to all these very key uh, protocols because life must go on mm. we are not like the western country where every street every individual is known uh, here a lot of people are not known streets are not well recorded so there's a need for uh mm. people to be allowed to walk to go out and see what they can they can survive with but still yet we must know that our lifestyle now must change. The lifestyle must change now. Mm. The way we interact with people before must change. The way we go about now, we must change. Our dressing, our hand washing, all those health hygiene, hygienic uh, uh, things put in place must be adhered to. At months, mm. as you are entering bars, the person that is uh, order is keke. He has his hand sanitizer with him there. As you are coming in, he's giving you sanitizer. 
you are rub you are using it and it's ensuring you are maxed. If you are not maxed, you cannot enter my KK. That is what they should do. If you are not maxed, mm. you cannot enter the box. You cannot enter the taxi. You must be maxed. Mm. After coming in, you have the the, 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 the sanitizer that is giving you or the or cada man or the KK man or the taxi driver or the bus driver. Yes. And so also because of the fact that um, like the bus drivers, for example, who want to load their bus to the to the to the full to capacity, they have to reduce it and instead maybe maybe they have to reduce it and then the, the, the tax force. Let me say those people who are uh, the the road transport workers, they should have their own tax force to check, you know, the number of people who are getting into each bus, getting into each taxi. Mm -hmm. That is how we can also control it at this level, at our own community level here. But the fact remains that there is cause for work. Thank you very much. Uh, Paul, do people really believe that this coronavirus actually exists? Uh, because if uh, they do, I don't know why, up till now, a lot of people are still not with their face mask on. There is still no social distancing. I saw the clips on the on the on the TV and the clips you sent, and we find out that a lot of our people are still highly, highly nonchalant. Mm -hmm. So it gives me the pressure that maybe people do not even believe that the thing really do exist. No, uh, yes, there are people who don't actually believe it, or there are who think um, it's not as serious as um, it is being um, uh, touted. Uh, mm -hmm. I also think that even those who believe, uh, those who believe, because of our uh, the Nigerian, the typical Nigerian nonchalance. Uh, let, well, let let uh, understand the people a bit. Now, what I can understand with people, please, let's let's put that understand. Uh, let's quote and uh, let's quote it. Now, you, we uh, need to also understand that uh, during the lockdown, a lot of people were economically uh, disadvantaged a lot of people were bereft of their uh, their, their sources of income uh we, we need to understand that like 80 percent of nigerians uh maybe i'm even being um uh, conservative with the figure are living on daily income uh a lot of them couldn't uh, uh, access um, income a lot of them couldn't do their business or their trade uh during the during the lockdown uh you you know uh, from experience I, I, I cannot i've lost count of how many people um uh, came to me either uh, or there was that people that you know, not all of them are even new personally you know and uh, or maybe in my facebook inbox asking for financial help i've lost count i've lost count uh, i was able to assist as well as i could but uh, i can't get everybody so and I remember that uh, at the, at the, uh, when the lockdown was first announced, I was asked on a TV show uh, about the, its effectiveness. Uh, we are listening to uh, President Barry's speech. He said that um, for every Nigeria to be taken care of, I said something then, and what I said sounded very pathetic. I said, even Nigerians who were not vulnerable then will soon become vulnerable. Hmm. And even those, even those any monthly income, with head of how big, a uh, big company are they not star? Look at uh, Eric, uh, for example, the probably biggest player in the aviation sector. You understand? Know, asking ninety percent of the staff to go and live without pay, starting in May, because the 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 uh, the, the aviation sector has apparently become distressed. Even my own um, professional jurisdiction, the media, uh, recently. Independent media owners in the, in the north of Nigeria, those, those governors and the federal government, even some media houses in the southwest, those governors asking for bailout, bailout, mm. uh, and they would shut down. So the lockdown, a lot of people felt like birds that have been left on their cage, their, their, their cage. Mm. Uh, you understand? Because of that, they say, ah, today, all the money were not made before. Uh, today, today, I'm not going to come. They have kind of thing. But then, so, but I think, I think, I think, 
I, I suspect that we might see go the way of Ghana. Ghana. Maybe we will have this for two weeks. And then if we have uh, skyrocketing cases, of uh, skyrocketing uh, uh, number of confirmed cases, maybe we'll go back to <laughs> we'll go, we'll lock down Nigeria again. But now... Uh, okay. Because, look, my, my, if, if you ask me what is my attitude, what is my reaction to the, to the, to the first uh, easing of the lockdown, it's neither here nor there. Because Nigeria, let, let's face it back here, Nigeria cannot sustain the lockdown. Nigeria, about, yes, we have corruption. But Nigeria is a very poor country. Nigeria is a very, very, very poor country. You know, I was, I, I, I was contributing on, um, well, yesterday I was contributing, when you, uh, you interview some people, and one of your guests said, Nigeria is rich. Yeah, Nigeria is rich. Nigeria is rich in natural resources, or staff natural resources. But when it comes to liquidity, I mean, what Nigeria has in reserve, you know, what Nigeria has in reserve, Nigeria is a very, very, very poor country. It is not for nothing that it is called the world, uh, uh, what is that, poverty capital. You know, the poverty capital of the world. Nigeria is a very poor country. Government cannot even reach out to, to, to what we call, to all the, that's why you have disproportionate uh, distribution of financial aid. Apart from corruption, be a factor. However, we, we need to know is that we don't even have a, a, a viable social register of those people who are indigent in this country. Look at it now. In America, in America, 30 million people have five jobless, uh, jobless claims within six weeks. In America, only 30 million people. And people are receiving, are, are people are receiving checks from government. They are receiving a lot. But it's not happening in Nigeria. That is why you see a lot of our people going now, trying to make the money they can today. However, however, we must, this is a time that everybody must take responsibility for themselves and for their neighbor. Okay. Yes, you need to make the money. You need to sell that product. You need to sell that service. Okay? But then, make sure, as the social distancing is something we can practice. We can practice social distancing when we, when we are just by the ACL. We can actually do distancing when people are boarding public buses. They can practice, public can, they can practice social distancing. It's just about to be, like, to be a little bit more responsible. That's just what we need. Okay. People need to be responsible. Possible. Possible. Hmm. Uh, uh, Friday, Paul said that yes. his, he has a fear that we may be going the way of Ghana if we are not careful. Do you believe that? Too? Have we really learned any lessons from that? And if we are going the way of Ghana, who do we blame? Because really, if we were to consider some of the things, measures that the other countries are putting in place to ease the lockdown, you find they have placed some measures on ground. The, the, the people that came out this morning, they came out like a bunch of hungry lions. That's been caged for a very long time. Do you, do you, do you share in that sentiment? Yes, I, I have the fear because, you know, we, we are certain cases. It's not only Ghana that is close to us here. Hmm. We, also have, we also have Russia. And then there's yeah. another country that is, and then suddenly the, 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 the issue, you know, skyrocketed. So I, we need to, that is why this uh, uh, show right now is very important to so Nigeria's We'll know that we need to learn from what is happening from our neighbors. We need to learn. And then those basic hygiene, those basic protocols we need to imbibe, we put them on, we carry them on as we want to go and get our livelihood. Very important. Mm -hmm. So yesterday, for example, I got myself face masks, about four of those face masks. Mm -hmm. I had like two earlier, uh, but I need more. I need to give to my wife and then to other people in the house here. So that when they are going out, they put it on. That is how it is. Every household should ensure that is that is how we can do it from the from the household. From the household. And so this kind of program will reemphasize 
the need for us to go through all these health uh, hygienic measures, the protocols in place, the social distancing. We just need to keep on saying them. Because just mm. like what Paul said, we cannot, we cannot be under lockdown. It's sickening, it's terrible. It's it sickening. So we cannot be under lockdown. And I, I read what Soludo said, was Soludo. How yeah. our, our, own, our own climb here is completely different from what is obtainable in the West. And so we can just see how to tinker with our own thing here and get our own solution and then see how we can improve on, you know, flattening the curve, keeping our people healthy and ensure that this pandemic is far, far, far away from people. Far from, and then, of course, the need for us to now see how to wake up our business again because businesses cannot just be okay now till next year. Mm. If you heard um, what um, Jack Ma said, that you should forget about business now. Just pray and thank God if you survive 2020, 2020 so that mm -hmm. by next year now, you put your, your business on the pedal of, you know, and moving on. But right now, just be concerned with surviving the pandemic. And so for us in Nigeria, all our friends here in Abuja, what to keep on telling ourselves is we need to go through this protocol, wear your face mask, observe social distancing, wash your hands regularly. They, uh, and of course, I also call on government. Government too need, uh, need to also, because like in Abuja here, where the government is saying they should have social, they should have a face mask, they didn't provide anyone. They didn't. So the people are left to provide for themselves. People that don't have money. People who are crying up and down for, for how to, what, what to eat. So basically, the government need to also intervene in providing social, I mean, uh, face masks for our people here in Abuja and of course across the uh, the country so that we can be healthy, we can be able to live uh, with this thing. Because I have read in uh, uh, the nation this morning where the government is saying that Nigeria should learn to live with, uh, the, 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 with the virus. Yeah, with the pandemic. So we, should, so we want to, if we must learn to live with it, we must also be able to have all these things in place. People are in need. People are in need. Mm. Just, okay. Now, I, I read. Mm. So we can actually. You're, you're, you're right. There is cause uh, for worry, mm. but all the same, we can tame this thing. We can control it. If we put, if as we are doing our businesses, as we are going out for whatever we are doing, we have all these things in mind. If we have those things in mind, mm. then we can definitely say that uh, we can win it. Okay, uh, uh, Paul. Uh, uh, now the, the the federal government is saying they have done their best. That the fight is now with the Nigerians. Now that they have eased the lockup, that the fight is now with the Nigerians, whether to survive it or not. What's your take on that? Well, the, the assumption that they have done their best is a, is a lie, a partial lie. Let me put it that way. Um, I want to take it from where uh, John Friday stopped on looking for our own solution, own growth solution. Um, I read that Professor Charles Ludo's uh, speech. And uh, it, it, that speech, that uh, this speech or an, yeah, an article, yeah, I think it was he delivered a speech somewhere. Then we, um, it's still an article. So uh, that speech or article is full of wisdom. The truth of the the, the Sassoludo said that um, there is no way on earth that Nigeria can sustain the lockdown economically. That's a fact. Now. That we need to look for our own solution. The fact is this: look, the nations of the world, different countries in the world, uh, the, the, uh, developed countries are uh, trying uh, doing that trial, you know, all of that. Even if they, even if any of the vaccine is satisfied, trust me, they will think of Nigeria. <laughs> they will think of their people first. If a cure, if a vaccine is found in, in, in Great Britain today, in, in the US today. Before they think of Nigeria, before they think of our own country, they think of Africa, they will think of America or uh, Great Britain for. That's a fact. Mm. Now, Madagascar is a good example. I, I cannot 
fully attest to the to the uh, to the uh, efficiency of that COVID organic, uh, which they are uh, using now. But the president seems sure. The president seems sure. And as, as we speak today, other African countries are even importing. Equatorial Guinea, Equatorial Guinea got a, a shipment or some shipment of COVID organic. Guinea Bissau, the same thing. Tanzania too, I think, has asked for it. Um, um, Congo Brazzaville, I think, is also asking for it. Kenya, yeah. okay, Kenya, okay, Kenya is asking for it. Now, the issue is that Nigeria has to look inward. We should not become famous for only for one night. We should not only become famous for financial corruption or internet scam. You even though the world is, we can't, we don't have to be dependent on what the Uyibos are saying all the time. The World Health Organization was very, has been very pessimistic about the, 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 the COVID organic in Madagascar. But Madagascar is saying, look, we are trying this thing on people. And they are okay, it's giving their immunity. It's killed in seven days. You, you, you understand? Why can't we look, also look inwards? I should also look in well. The other side of the summer is he said he had, dis uh, had discovered a potential cure. But nobody is taking that man serious. Nobody is taking it serious. Hmm. Nobody is taking the man serious. The other side is that he had um, developed a cure for Ebola. You understand? Nobody is taking the man Well, maybe if maybe they think it's not credible. But we can function with such a you understand government is not doing enough. That's number one in the answer of looking for a solution. The government needs to engage more with the people. Forget about, I know that uh, press conferences are held every day uh, in Abuja. The conferences are held every day, almost every day in Lagos. But beyond that, speak to the people in the languages they understand. Speak to them at the community level. Make use of, do time hall meetings. Make use of um, the community leaders. The city, how many of them are even sufficiently educated and licensed about uh, social distancing. You know, you have to go around your neighborhood. If you, if you take a walk around your neighborhood, you see people, they don't even, it's as if they don't understand what social distancing means. You know, people need to be uh, uh, sufficiently enlightened. I was, uh, I almost changed my father because I was very, I was very angry. I, I went to, I took my little son to, 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 to the barber shop and I saw that people were just moving around. I, I told my father, please don't sit down here. And I was telling the young man, well, yeah, he said, he called me pastor. The pastor, I said, this is of the rich. I was, I had to control myself. Such natural ignorance caused by illiteracy. So much illiteracy. You know what I'm saying? You know, just we need to, uh, government needs to do what? Uh, engage more. People need, Nigeria, in Nigeria here, we have this cavalier attitude towards everything. Yeah, we have this cavalier attitude. But if government, look, we have, we have a problem in this country. If you cast your mind back to the time Babangida was the military head of state, we have an agency called MAMSA. Now, MAMSA was an agency that was uh, given a public orientation and enlightenment about the programs of government. Now, we didn't have the social media. But I know that Mansa, Mansa was doing a great job there. Look, if we have will, when they say will, they say will. We have an agency in Nigeria called National Orientation Agency. I don't know what that agency is doing. It's almost it's like a money bond agency. I don't know what they are doing. They are supposed to be doing that. I want to say, well, yes, I see jingles on TV, I see jingles on, I jingles on radio. But, Let's go to the level of the community. Let's do the social media. So, wait, the, question, the question we want to ask is this. Uh, we, we shouldn't even... Do we sh do, should we leave this work to the government in the central alone? We have grassroots leadership. Uh, uh, absolutely. What are those in the local government doing? What are our chairmen doing? What are our councillors oh, doing? Oh, oh, can I, I don't something? see anything. Oh, can I tell you something? Sorry, can I come before? The nature of my job, eh? I get to see a lot of things that many people don't see. I was somewhere 
I don't know what it means. I was shown where, where local government councillors in a particular state, in the the state, were meeting. They could see the way they were fighting over money. As local government councillors, you will be, if you were there, you will be ashamed of the people that were representing Nigerians. You will think that these people were just a bunch of motor park couch fighting over money, fighting over cash. Cash. Now, those are people you think would be responsible enough to uh, lighten the classroom. Ordinarily, they should be the ones, the councillors, the chairman. There was a chairman that was a, a, a snake now. There was a chairman, I, I went to his office, look at the I challenged him. I challenged him. But you know what happened? The man, I, I learned that the man after he became local government chairman of that particular area in Abuja, he just moved to Lekki or Aja. After living there, let me don't change. <laughs> you know, so you see, we have a problem in this country. We have a problem of bad leadership, and we have followers who are not also doing very, very well. I think we need to. Uh, we have what you are doing is part of the enlightenment. People need to do what they let them lead for themselves. Nigerians, yes, Nigerians have a lot to do. Uh, like like you said, Nigerians have a lot to do in also protecting themselves. You know, if government will not do enough, let us say government is doing well, it's, it's trying. Let us say government is trying, and say it's trying. Because I see, I'm very close to uh, the people who do not say government, and um, <laughs> I see what they are doing. In Abuja, yeah, as I told you, they are they are they are more concerned with uh, arresting people, <laughs> defaulters. You know, some of those like the, like the palliative, for example, in Abuja here, the news is not very cheery. Okay, the news is not very cheery because um the people are the way they go about it. Yeah, I was thinking they should go to houses themselves but you know because of the, mm. the shabby the shabby way that they did it you know it was being looted you know it was being looted along the way people you just see people just um see a vehicle or a trailer of a uh, palliative they just hang on it and then start distributing themselves so you know it was not properly done but all the same uh now that the the lockdown is easing Government should not leave the people alone. Government should still continue to see how to get palliative across to the people. Government should see how to help small business holders. All right, so that they can get back on their how, feet. How, 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 do, how do, you, do they do that? Yes. Because that's uh, the main concern, the small yes. business holders. Fine. Already the CBN uh, thing is already going on. The, the, the stimulus, 50 billion stimulus is going on. I know uh, some business owners who are already assessing it. So they should make it transparent so that people can assess it, uh, basically. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, those people who are, who are shop owners, they should give a uh, rent uh, holiday to business owners. It's a, it's a way of helping them. If you already have a mm -hmm. building, if uh, the, the, your tenant did not pay for like three, six months, no problem. Let him just wriggle, wriggle his way through this period, and then later on, he can now get it back. So I think those are the things that they need to do. The money that is being is being available to to be assessed. Government should ensure that those who really need them get them. It should not be like uh, uh, who know who, who know who who know man yeah, like our own normal way of doing things. It should be transparent. If it's online, you apply online, and then it go through to end and then they get their those they, they get those facilities and then use it to revive their business businesses right now need to be revived a lot of people are are, are set, in fact like today i, I, I had somebody I you, you, you. The phone is going to sell for 60 70 thousand naira because there's no money he's begging someone to buy it for four thousand naira you can imagine the loss, hmm. the loss is is so huge so businesses need to be revived and the government need to intervene in those areas while we are talking about the health aspect, the economic aspect of business also need to be looked into so that people mm. can continue living and then people can continue to do the thing they need to do. Yeah. Mm. Also, Paul, what, what's your own parting shot on this? 
Yeah, with regard to uh, what's the question again? The gov the what the government can really do to help our people in leveraging uh, the economic gains. Uh, well, uh, okay, yes. Um, I understand what uh, John said. Uh, my worry, government should continue to distribute policies, of course. But my my worry is that um, uh, how do they even determine uh, who needs it, what they put that need it more? Uh, how can they reach out to uh, everyone who needs it? But let's let's let, uh, sorry for cutting you. Uh, uh, is the palliative still ongoing during the time of the of of uh, law of ease of lockdown? Yes, palliative should be. I don't think it's going. No, I don't think it's going. Uh -huh. No, it's it should be. No, it should. It should go and survive. go and look for how you survive. No, no, it should. In principle, should still be going. I think I think there is vehicle today uh, that was supposed to be distributing palliative. Uh, today, but I think you know, people are not, you know, are not working. Okay, Okada riders are not working now, they use palaces, don't they? Uh huh. Yeah. So people are still uh, ahead, so people are, they still need the palaces. Uh, businesses are going to, to take time before they pick up, those who are still need some, uh, uh, they need some help. But you know, my, my worry is this, my own worry is. How do we transparently get it across to people? I'll give you an example. But the one who said that um, the first thing they did when they wanted to do quality, uh, they they spoke to a CDA uh, chairman or CDC chairman uh, that okay they should give they should submit their names in every community, maybe the most vulnerable in uh, in every community, and that some of the CDC CDA chairmen were not doing very well. They want to announce to the whole community that this is what I want to have brought to. You know, this is what I want to brought to. Maybe 200 people, you know, milling around to get what was actually meant for 10 families. So he said they now have to do or use another method, uh, which was maybe reaching out to unions and everything. I think if we are very transparent and very sincere, we can start looking for new ways, innovative ways, to actually get to people that need this um, uh, palliative. What about those who have lost their jobs? What about those who have lost their jobs? I think actually, one of the that they could use the police to their account, those who have uh, used BBS. Uh, so there are, there are methods that can be used. But what is important is what transparency. We need to be very transparent. Mm -hmm. uh, the other time we heard that um, from, uh, uh, from Bank of Rice uh, that were sent to some states as they were already contaminated, how mm -hmm. it happened. We don't know. So all of this, we need to be more transparent, we need to be more open in the country so that uh, people that need these things will actually get there. Okay, okay. But uh, uh, Friday, yes. Doctor. let's put a spotlight on Kano. Kano. There is now the ease in lockdown. And the people are not actually following the inter lockdown thing this no. morning we still had loads of people entering lagos and and the the, the status of kanu presently now is really a cause for worry what is your take on this with specific reference to how we are now going up and down in terms of you know the ease of of lockdown yeah, um, Kano is, uh, is an issue that we seriously need to be worried about. Very seriously. Because I've been to Kano and I know how crowded Kano is. I know how crowded Kano is. I know, apart from the streets, apart from the way their houses are even built alone, is still an issue. So, now that we have this kind of issue, so I wasn't surprised when deaths were, were, were increasing, you know, by the day. In, in the space hmm. of two days, three days, you record about uh, two, three hundred people passing away. So it's, it's, it's just, it's just scary. And hmm. 
in the north, for example, in Kano, for example, they don't even believe all these things. Even as they are even dying, they just believe that uh, if they die in this situation, it is God that has uh, accepted it. Yeah, so they have to change that kind of mentality. They have to change that kind of, and and some of them are, are actually running out of the out of Kano into other neighboring states, and and uh, yeah, they are, they are turning them back. So they, so there is there is a need for one. The governor himself was not even doing well. The governor was he failed completely. Instead of a governor, when this thing has not come to your state, you didn't put measures in place. You were just nonchalant about the whole thing. And as soon as thing got there, Canada is second to Lagos in the space of uh, one week. It's second, you know, because the governor missed it completely. And that is why uh, what the cross Valley governor is doing, today everybody is following him. You know, initially people were just misunderstanding him and then they were attacking him. But now, cross Valley remains safe. Hmm. The borders are closed. When I mean closed, it, they, 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 they cut a very big tree and, and block the roads. You can't pass. <laughs> yes. So if you are going to pass, you are. They have people who are there. You will wash your hands. If you don't have a face mask, somebody is giving you face masks for free, <laughs> and then you are, and then you are being tested. Your temperature, and all that before you will cross. That is it. And then before they will cross essential uh, uh, product like food and, and uh, maybe fuel, they will do all those tests before you cross. But the road is closed. At least for where I know, when I traveled home with a gov uh, government official, the road was closed. You know, so that is what Kano is supposed to do. Kano, Kano government did not close his road. He didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. And I don't even know why we have a governor and then he cannot step up. Instead, he's crying for money. Government should give him 15 billion and all that, you know. So Kano mm. really, really, because if it's not tackled, if it's not tackled, it will spread from there to neighboring states and and, and, and to the country at large. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I think uh, the federal government on its own need to step into Kano very, very strongly because I'm almost surprised that at the rate of the debt, at the rate of the spread, there is an easy in Kano. It's, it, it's wrong. I don't know what not to, I don't know what the government is protecting in Kano. I don't know. There should be no special treatment to Kano. Deal with it decisively. Lock the lock it down properly exactly. until there is there is, there is drastic uh, uh, easing of the whole issue uh, of the spread. Yes, Kano should be properly locked down for the next two weeks. And I'm I'm surprised that what the, 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 the what the president said. Just a week, they are not calling for easing. Why? Why should it be so? Why should it be so? Because it's already becoming, you know, a, a major center where this thing is spreading from. So there should be, there should be total lockdown. The governor should step up. He should wake up from his sleep, from his slumber, and all his uh, uh, officials. They should step up and get this thing done, done properly. Like Shinasara State, a whole. An assembly member is dead. The whole assembly now is on lockdown. Mm. The whole assembly in the national state here is on total lockdown. And everybody is quarantined. So this thing is not a joking matter. Uh, people who know people are, are, are telling us that their, their friends are dying. So it's not a joking matter at all, you know, basically. We need to, kind of need to be taken seriously. The government should step in there and see how to contain the spread. Thank you very much. Uh, as we bring this to a close, I want your last shot, uh, Odada, on this. What advice do you give to Lagosians as they move out tomorrow? Uh, Lagosians are lucky to have a governor who is very proactive. And I think the best they can do is to actually uh, cooperate with him. Uh, we are talking about Kano, we are talking about Mr. Ganduje, as uh, Mike the Friday said, uh, did not, has not been showing purposeful leadership from the beginning. Uh, uh, just like uh, Kaduna, Governor, National Health is very proactive and very active, Lagos State Governor too is really, really 
doing a lot. So let negotiate. Let Lagos is um, for for reasons that are very obvious has become the epicenter of uh, is the epicenter of this uh, particular uh, uh, disease. Uh, negotiations just it's not easy to control negotiations, it's not easy to coordinate negotiations. So the negotiators should speak to themselves. Let us cooperate with this government. Let us observe social distancing measures. If you have no business going out, stay in your house. If you can work from home, work from home. If you cannot work from home, if you must go out. Please be responsible. If you if you have if you must go by public transport, if you if you do have a car, you want to go by public transport, just make sure that the driver, the operator of that transport has a facial mask. Your the fellow passengers also have facial mask. If you don't have sanitizer, which you should have, get your own sanitizer. These things don't cost much. Get your own sanitizer, sanitize your hands. When you get off. That, uh, that that particular transport, you know, sanitize your hands again. Do it over and over. By the time we do this, I think uh, look what we need to do. What the surest the surest way to actually combat this um, uh, this disease is for people to uh, stay at home or adhere to uh, the the what they call that, the uh, the guidelines that we are given by government. I hope that. By the grace of God, I know it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy, but I, by the grace of God, I expect that if all of us cooperate within few months, we we'll probably have minimized the cases of um, okay. COVID. Yeah. Okay. John, your partition to people from Abuja. Yes, thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, in Abuja here, I, I, I will not. Um, I would say that the FCT minister, I think, is the state minister that is even doing well. She's more visible and uh, than the minister himself. I will also commend, of course, the local state governor uh, who has shown the leadership. And, of course, mm -hmm. my state governor, Governor Ben Ayade, who has also been very proactive. In fact, right now, yeah. he's already thinking uh, post COVID 19. Aha. Wow. In, I was saying Abuja, we just have to know that our way of life must change. Mm. It's very those in the rural communities, our way of life must change because in Abuja, most of the people come from rural communities, Nanya, Maraba, Mpape here, Kubwa, Lugbe Airport. So our way of life must change. We must maintain mm. a healthy lifestyle. You make sure you have your hand sanitizer as you are going out in the morning. You put it in your bag, you put it in your pocket, uh, you have your face marks. If you don't have the medical type, you just go and do the other one from get a very good tailor. Yeah, it's working for us here in Nigeria. And then you 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 make sure that you regularly wash your hand. Stay off, just like what my colleague said. If you don't have anything to do in town, stay within your locality, stay indoor. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That is it because going to choke the city is no longer necessary now. You must be sure of where you are going to. Like me, I'll be leaving early, very early tomorrow for a reason. For a reason. And shortly after that, I'll run back to the house. So there is no need for us to go and choke the city and roam, 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 roam about. Government need to also mm -hmm. see how to help Nigerians in that so city here. City. Yes, to maintain these protocols. The bank. In the markets, in the malls, there must be somebody should be saying it loud. Someone should be announcing it. There should be a speaker. Someone should have speaker. Maintain social distance. Where we put on mm. your mask. That kind of a thing should be done in all these places so that people will become conscious of what they are, need to do to cut the spread and remain healthy. And I believe that as we do that, and we trust God and remain prayerful and we keep ourselves. God himself will also take charge and keep us healthy. Thank you very much. Uh, what a way to end this uh, wonderful broadcast tonight. You said we shouldn't choke the, 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 the city. Yeah. And uh, apart from not choking the city, I want to pick on the words of uh, Andrew Cuomo, the New York, uh, I mean, the, the, the governor yeah. of uh, New York. Yeah. He says, when you put on the face mask, 
you are respecting me. You are not just respecting yourself. When you do not put on the face mask, you are disrespecting, not yourself, you are disrespecting the people that you are facing. And you are putting them more in danger. And you are being more selfish. Because you do not know if you are really asymptomatic to this disease. And in not putting on the face mask, you are, you know, exposing the people around you to grave dangers. Exactly. Exactly. I want to appeal to us, please, let's adhere to the social distancing. It's all about you. Dead men do not tell tales. The moment you are affected by this, it's only God that can really help you. And that's the more reason why you need to be extra careful because this uh, disease doesn't know any uh, there is there is no no racial distinction. Doesn't know any, any ethnic national uh, ethnic uh, clan. Doesn't even know whether you are rich or poor. He's a leveler. Yeah, and that's the reason why we need to be very very careful. We've been told to go out if we want to, but if you must go out, please ensure you are there with all health uh, precautions. May the Lord keep us through till the end of this pandemic. Uh, we know it will end. We are very sure it will. But we need to be very, very careful. Once again, I want to say a big thank you to my distinguished uh, speakers, Paul Dada. Uh, thank you very much. Friday. Thank you Thanks, very much. Sir. God bless Amen. you. So we'll come away again. It's bye for here. God bless you. Bye. Good night, everybody.